Hi, and welcome to my tutorials on Euclid's Elements, Book 7. This video presentation is going to be on Proposition 3 of Book 7. Now, in this proposition, uh, Euclid basically describes one method of calculating the largest common divisor for three numbers. So how do we go about doing it? Well, the first thing we do is we take the greatest common divisor of a and b, and let's call that d, and we do that using the, propos or the methods described in Proposition 2. And then if, so this is one condition, if d also measures c, then it is a common divisor for a, b, and c. And this proposition states that it is also the greatest common divisor. So how do we prove that it's the greatest common divisor? Well, we're going to do a proof by contradiction. So let's assume that we have a greatest common divisor, e, of a, b, and c, and e is greater than d. So now e must measure a, b, and c, and if e measures a, b, and c, or sorry, if e measures a and b, then it must also measure d, since according to the porism in Proposition 2, if a number measure other two numbers, it also measures its greatest common divisor. So e measures d. but we have that d is less than e and that e is measured by d, which is completely incompatible. So these three statements here, that e is the greatest common divisor of a, b, and c, and that e is greater than d, and d is measured by e, are incompatible. So therefore, this cannot be true, and we have that the greatest common divisor is d. Now let's look at the second situation where d does not divide or is not a measure of c. First we need to demonstrate that c and d are not prime to one another. These three numbers that we're doing, a, b, and c, are not prime to one another. So a, b, and c are not prime to one another. So let's prove that c and d are also not prime to one another. So since a, b, and c are not prime to one another, there's a number x which measures a, b, and c. That's by the definition, and x is not equal to 1. Now if x measures a, measures a and b, then again by the porism of Proposition 2, it must also measure a and b's greatest common divisor, so it must also measure d. Now we have that x measures c and d, and x is not equal to 1, so therefore c and d are not prime to one another. The next thing we need to do is create, find the greatest common divisor between c and d. Let's call it e. And remember, since c and d are not prime to one another, e is not equal to 1. Now since E measures D and D measures A and B, then E also measures A and B. And since E measures C and A and B, it is a common measure of A, B, and C. This proposition also states that E is the greatest common divisor of A, B, and C. So now we need to prove that E is the greatest common divisor of A, B, and C. And we're going to do that by, again, contradiction. So let F be the greatest common divisor of A, B, and C, and let F be larger than E. Now since it's the greatest common divisor, it must also measure A, B, and C. If F measures A and B, it must also measure the greatest common divisor of a and b, which is d. So f also measures d. Now f measures c and d. So again, from proposition 2, the porism from proposition 2, 
If f measures c and d, it will also measure its greatest common divisor e. So f also measures e. So now we have that f is greater than e, but it also measures e, which is impossible. So therefore, our original idea that there existed an f that was a greatest common divisor of a, b, and c that was larger than e cannot be true. And thus, e is the greatest common divisor of a, b, and c.